All right, so let's talk about the NIBP, non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. Several different machines that are out there, uh, the ones that we'll see in the field most of the time are gonna be built into your monitors. So this is a LifePak 15, doesn't really matter which machine you have, like I said, most of them all have an NIBP built into them. So just like in taking a manual blood pressure, first thing you wanna do is make sure that there's not any reason I can't take a blood pressure over here, whether they've got a fistula shunt, um, they've had a mastectomy or a history of lymphedema or something. So is there any reason I can't take a blood pressure over here? No. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna take, we've got the three different size cuffs. Um, some of them will have a couple of different, they'll be like a large adult and then a, an extra large adult. So you wanna find the blood pressure cuff that fits appropriately. It needs to cover between 60 and 80% of the upper arm. That one is the large adult. It would work in a pinch. It's a little too much. So I'm gonna switch over, try the regular adult. And it does, it covers the right amount. If you look on the underside of your cuff, there are marks. There's a place for the artery. So you wanna use that and align it with the artery. Remember, we use the brachial artery so we turn the patient's arm over. Remember, keleology, break the arm where it naturally breaks. That's where that artery is. So you wanna try and find that artery, find that pulse. Okay, and we know where that pulse is. So you wanna take your line, and it doesn't matter which line you use, just one of them needs to cover directly over that. Now what's really important especially with the NIBPs, but a regular blood pressure cuff as well, is that you tuck this in and then you get it as tight as you can before you start to inflate. Make sure there's not any crinkles or, or pinches in it because that'll uh, put pressure on the patient and actually injure them. So you wanna be careful with that. Make sure everything's connected. And we're gonna relax. You can just relax that arm. With the NIBP, there are several things that you can run into that will cause an incorrect reading. Obviously not positioning the cuff in the right location on the arm, not getting it over the brachial artery. If you choose a cuff that is too large or too small, you'll have a tendency to get an incorrect reading. If you don't put the cuff on nice and tight, you have a tendency to get an incorrect reading. Movement, especially driving down the road in the back of an ambulance, the, if the roads are real rough and stuff, sometimes you might get an incorrect reading. So you wanna be cognizant of that. So our pressure is 100 over 62. That may be a normal blood pressure for her. That's the kind of thing that I would ask, is, do you know where your blood pressure, does it normally run a little low, does it normally run a little high? But if you get a pressure, whether it's manual or with an NIBP, but especially with an NIBP, because remember it's a machine and machines can make mistakes. If you get a blood pressure reading that is really weird. If it's really low or really high, the numbers are really close together, anything that's out of the ordinary, check it again. Make sure your cuff's on good. Make sure it's in the right location. Switch arms if you can. Check it in the other arm. If you still end up with a weird reading, always, always manually check those, those numbers that are just really high or really low before you start panicking or treating the patient for whether it's hypertension or hypotension or whatever the case may be, especially if the patient doesn't present that way. If your blood pressure comes back as 70 over 40 and they look normal, they're not having any problems at all, I double check that pressure. I always go to a manual cuff anytime I get a weird reading like that. Last thing I wanna talk about is uh, something we see a lot and I, I get it with uh, money being tight and those kind of things, reusing these cuffs. They're reusable, but up to a point because the Velcro will start getting loose. And when that happens, you're going to start getting bad readings because you'll hear as the cuff inflates, you'll hear the Velcro starting to pop and it's not uncommon for that to just blow loose. At that point, that cuff needs to be thrown away and you need to get a new, new blood pressure cuff. So keep that in mind. But that is an NIBP and that's how you take an NIBP.